Hey guys, I'm gonna beat on the dead horse of this David um, Davis Garcia fight. And then I'm gonna try to get off of it, but you go back and you look and you see and you it just gets worse every when you go back and you look and you can psychologically easily figure it out when you take announcers out of it, take with a grain of salt everything everybody says and independently think for yourself. I generally can sit back and once I take the, the chaotic voices out of it, and what somebody is telling me I see, and I get all these things out of the way, I go on what I actually really do see. So, we're at a point with boxing that boxing is cancerously as sick as it's ever been. It's the sickest it's ever been. Uh, Boxing is on a downturn, especially in the United States, because uh, we are just simply not producing very aggressive fighters. Um, I know there's chess in boxing. I know we got to have uh, uh, a lot of thought. I know thinking ahead. I know all these things. I just simply do. But when the, the chess part of it takes and just drowns the excitement part of it, and then on top of that, you have people that have no heart in the sport, uh, that's awful. Uh, it's like... Hey, uh, going from watching the NFL, which is a feminizing itself, but this is just an example. You watch the NFL, the National Football League, and then you go watch the United States, USFL, the United States flag football team, and professional boxing, especially in the United States, is the USFL, the flag football team of boxing. It's as simple as that. I go for what I see. Uh, the BKFC in London... And I'm, I'm going to go go here for a second. Uh, our, our, somebody that's dear to us that Joe looks up to tremendously, and I do too, as a matter of fact, I look up to this guy very much. I respect this man. But you can go look at someone like Danny Christie in the Bare Knuckles in England, in the U.K., uh, you can, everybody should go look. Uh, if you want to see what's going on with boxing, take all the chaos of what you're hearing and all this information and all this bunk out. Go look at one of the last two videos uh, at the YouTube channel, The Real Danny Christie, look at either of the two last videos that this champion, now champion, congratulations again to him, has put out and look at him. And look how he looks. He said, I had my eyebrow hanging off. He did. Do you realize that? He had a piece of his face hanging off and won the fight. Kept going and won. 
and then go look at the face of Ryan Garcia after this last fight. Go look at the face of Ryan Garcia after any fight and take a look, see what you see. A picture's worth a million words today, not a thousand. A picture is worth a million words in this generation today. All right. That liver shot, that thing was high. Uh, granted, it's possible it caught the upper portion of his liver. It's possible he, or well, we know he caught that, that Davis caught a sweet spot on Garcia. And look, I'm not the only guy that feels this way. Julio Cesar Chavez is feeling just like I'm feeling. A lot of people are feeling just like I'm feeling. But a lot of people are placating a bunch of candies in boxing. Uh, and we are becoming many promoters and placating this. This mess. That shot was high. Garcia said at the end, he winded me. I lost some wind. I had wind taken from me. This boy just got hit hard. No more, no less. Here's the deal. The announcers, if you go back and you look at the fight, are telling you, oh, he got caught with a ferocious liver shot and... They were seeing something different as well, but they weren't. They're promoting it too, so they can't come out, and they're very limited on what they can say, uh, and and they exaggerate and sensationalize the trash because they want you to come back and see more trash because that's how they make a living. See, it's a conglomerated crap hole. Uh, of mess is what it is. Uh, it just upsets me so bad. And uh, Tank was coming back on him, and he looked up at Tank's facial expression. You can see it clear as day. Uh, and he went back down on that knee, wisely so. And I'll still stick to this. Folks, I, I'm not the smartest guy in the world. I'm not sitting here as a world champion, great trainer. Uh, I wasn't a great boxer. But one thing I can tell you is I, I, I know from repeatedly seeing things over decade after decade after decade after decade after decade, that in itself learns you. And I know what I know what I saw. I know what happened. This kid got his nose bloodied. I, I haven't seen any uh, anything in the corner, whether they told Ryan to blow his nose or whether they did the correct thing and said, "Do not blow the nose." I can't express to you how. A nose that's bleeding real bad and some just bleed down and some bleed back and the blood's coming through your mouth and every it's just it's not good and it's not pleasant and uh, but you got to fight through those things you, you, you got to make a decision am I gonna push on or am I gonna let this annoyance along with uh, getting punched pretty good along with the, my opponent getting more aggressive as this fight goes on, am I going to keep going or am I, or am I going to quit? The boy chose to quit. All right. Now I want to talk about this announcer crap. Uh, I don't even know the guy's names because I don't even care to know the guy's names that you young people 
get the pleasure of listening to on Showtime, all these different venues. Uh, but I'm going to tell you who I got to listen to. Okay? And we're going to get real here for a second. We're going to get real here. Because I don't care none of these guys, guys who I piss off. I'm sick of uh, Turban Head. Who would... Who in their right mind? See, this is how the crazy has inched up on you younger guys. He's probably a nice guy. But who in their right mind would would have a six foot four, 90 pound man standing in a slim suitie uh, with a turban hair rolled up going, get it on, get it on, whatever, whatever. It's just ridiculous. It's crazy. It's crazy is what it is. And I feel so bad for you young people because you don't know what sane is. Oh, well, that's a moronic individual walking down the street. Uh, uh, and there's other words I could use, but you can't even use the words no more. All oh, the moronic things. Oh, yeah. You've just come off a generation where it became cool to cut your hair like Mo off of the Three Stooges. And if you guys don't know the Three Stooges, go look at the Three Stooges. Jim Carrey put a movie out mocking it and it caught in dumb it, the movie Dumb and Dumber. And kids are going out here getting these haircuts, thinking they're cool. And walking around looking like damn fools. So I feel bad for you guys because you don't even know. You come up in a world where you don't even know what's real or fake or sane or insane. And let me tell you something. No matter what they tell you, insanity, there's nothing good about it. It's nothing good about it. Forces you to do things like keep voting the same way. Uh, like Einstein defined the word insanity doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results. So I guess that's why they think want to make insanity normal. So we just keep going down and keeping these people in power, expecting something different that never happens. All right. I had a guy named Don Dumfrey. Dumfrey. I grew up my whole life calling him Dumfrey. But it's Dunphy. And this man, uh, on all the closed circuit, which would be your, what you say, showtime today, we just called this, it was closed circuit. It was what it was. You'd have to go somewhere to watch the fight. Uh, I'm talking even pre cable vision here. And uh, this man would call this fight straight down the line. And we had him on television too. And uh, then a malcontent got into boxing, Howard Cosell, who eventually tried his best to kill boxing off because he's just in it for the money. And got lucky because him and Ali had a special relationship. God only knows why. I still ain't figured that out. But uh, Howard Cosell started this mess. You'd, you'd sit and you'd be watching a fight. And if you just... We're not listening to him. You were watching a, a totally different fight. Then you were listening to him. As the years progressed, he didn't start off this way. But he got to a point where you, he was watching a different fight. And he, he hung, started latching on to the power that he realized he had. Where he could just tell you, this guy won. He's won every round. He's doing this. He's doing that. When clearly the other guy won. And the other guy won every round. And he started playing with this power. And then you get 
to the guy I don't like the most out of any of them. Uh, I'm in good company, Mayweather, and a lot of these boxers that had to deal with him didn't like him either. Sonny Liston didn't like him. And that jerk was a lot of the reason why Sonny Liston turned on the press and all the ba beating and banging there. And he was a vicious some bitch who this guy is. And that's Larry Merchant. Nothing decent about this guy. And this guy is the teacher of these idiots that you see on TV today that are telling you, uh, that are sitting there. That was a massive liver shot when it was not. I mean, it was not. See, you put the, the, the film up and you're watching something and you see a hit. Maybe you hear the sound of a glove. Uh, but with them telling you and exaggerating greatly what you just saw, it, it, that's a psychological tool that's been used in propaganda since film came about. Pictures, since since the development, well, since art, you know, and newspapers. And a lot of us seem to fall for it every time. Now, Let's get on the idiots that weren't in there with uh, Ryan Gar Garcia at the end. He's out there. He's by himself. Uh, now, I haven't watched this whole thing, but I believe I was told that Joe Goosen wasn't out there either. And if he wasn't out there, it's the same thing. It was not because of death threats. That's BS. And it, if it was because of death threats... There were real death threats, real danger in uh, the uh, Muhammad Ali, Sonny Liston second fight, the rematch. It was so bad a city wouldn't take the fight and they had to put it up in an ice hockey rink in Lewiston, Maine. Little bitty place. If I'm not correct, maybe it, it didn't even seat 10,000 people. Maybe it you could see 6,000 or 3,000 or something. Very small place. Heavyweight championship of the world in a little uh, amateur, mind you, or school ice rink. Uh, ice hockey rink. But everybody was there. And they were there post-fight. Uh, nobody was running, and there was real death threats. They had German shepherds all over the place. They had armed guards. They were looking for huge racial things to happen. They were looking for a lot that was way more severe than this pissant little fight, which is what it was. No offense to... Tank Davis. I, I now I call him. My nickname for him is the Baltimore Bomber. I like Tank Davis. And I like Baltimore. I had somebody come up on me that was friends of my dad and said my dad went down into the same areas where Tank Davis was brought up. Uh, he, he loved going down in those that area. That area, if I'm hearing this correct, to eat because the better restaurants of the home cooking that my dad liked, and he went down there and he loved the people. Give a shit what color somebody was. And my dad towards the, used the big job, the biggest job he ever had to evangelize people. My dad loved the Lord. My daddy's king was Jesus Christ, and that's my king too. I'm not perfect, but that's my king. They weren't out there because they knew what Ryan Garcia did, and they huddled amongst themselves, and here's exactly a logist on exactly what happened. You've got uh, Bernard Hopkins, and you got Oscar De La Hoya. Well, what the hell happened here? What in the world was going on here? They go to Joe Goosen, what the hell? And they're all sitting there and they're underlings and they're saying this damn kid quit. He's got no heart at all. 
We have all been fooled by this kid. This kid's more interested in making social media uh, videos and checking his hair, and it's amazing. He, after the post-fight interview, he goes out on the, the, the walkway out. It's got the poster boards behind you. A guy catches him in front of that, or, or, or it's for himself. He's looking up into a video. Yeah, fans, because he's got to have the camera pointing back where he can see himself. Yeah, I'll be back. I think I'm going to take one or two uh, fights, and then uh, maybe I face Tank Davis again at 147. Thank you. I thank you to all my supporters. Look, this kid ain't got no heart. And we all should have saw it. I'm guilty of not seeing it. And that's what propaganda will do. This, man, this boy is never going to win a championship. Well, Oscar De La Hoya was a pretty boy and did underwear commercials and was a flaming sissy. Uh, and he went down uh, because Chavez hit him or somebody hit him with a liver shot. And he went down, but he came back. He got a real liver shot, folks. He was down. That's a liver shot. That's what happens. So I go back. You know, we need something like the UFC uh, or the the organization in, in England with the bare knuckle. We, if we could just get boxers to... Go to these or, these big organizations and say, hey, I want to fight with them. And if these guys can just pull together and get a boxing body set up and get all these piss-ass promoters, all these piss-ass lawyers, all these piss-ass, half-ass banksters out of that, these kids will make more money because boxing will flourish. Gloved boxing will flourish again. And it'll be bigger than ever. Than ever. It'll be bigger than ever. Uh, you, it'll be where Saturday afternoon, uh, hey, I'm going to watch boxing. Uh, I don't know about the Friday night fights, or they used to have fights back in the 90s and the 2000s, and I hadn't even really been watching a, a lot of that at all. Um, I'm just not. I'm watching bigger fights, and I need to stop doing that and start watching boxing and a whole picture of myself. Uh, we just we need to support boxing. And uh, young kids, go over to the real Danny Christie. It's, it's the real Danny Christie. Look at either one. You can just look at the thumbnails of his last two videos. He, he just fought Saturday night. And then go look at uh, Ryan Garcia or Tank, who got punched in the face quite a few times himself. Uh what these kids and what people are telling you, I don't give a shit how old they are. I don't care who's who. What these damn people are telling you kids today that, oh my God, he's a hitter. He's a basher. Kids, you ain't seen no bashers. And, in, and unless you go back decades, uh, you never will see bashers and bombers. Because uh, you don't have them. Uh, Joe Joyce fought that Zang guy. Uh, mm -hmm. Zang pile drived his face for those five rounds. I believe it was five rounds. They stopped it. Stopped it at the sixth. Mm -hmm. One of those rounds. And his face was just s swollen bad, right? Not unlike Christie. And he kept fighting. 
Now, just and they're heavyweights. Heavyweights, they're gonna hit extremely hard. Go look at Joe Joyce, and then go look at Ryan Garcia. You look at all these smaller weights here lately. They're coming out. They don't have swollen faces. You've seen a knee, people taking a knee in every other fight. And and people wonder why uh, I'm saying telling young boxers and showing young boxers and teaching young boxers and training young boxers in the art of aggression. Because all you got to do today is fight like hell. I don't care if you're in the uh, smallest of the small amateur tournaments. Get in there and fight. Get in there and punch. Yeah, I mean, I did a thing on the scoring the other day and this judging and uh, young people, you can't trust these judges. There's two things, young people. Don't trust to let something go in a judge's hands if you can at all, with over 100% of your effort, maximizing yourself. If you can get that guy out of there, get him out, and don't let anything go into another man's hands to decide your failure or your success. Don't do it. Just don't do it. That's the biggest thing. Uh, be aggressive. And the other thing is, just realize that uh, things like that huge fight, that was the biggest fight in over a year for the majority of us. That's all we were talking about. The fight starts and uh, I'm listening with some friends, the boxing scholar. Uh, we're listen, listening to it, and uh, he's like, first thing he said, God, they're just coming down, you know, rain walking. I'm excited as I'll get out. Me too. Uh, just the rain walk, we're like, wow. And then we had the damn fight. I don't want to put Davis down. I don't. Congratulations to him. But uh, if you wanted to see a real fight, you should have watched Danny Christie and uh, Holmes. Uh, Danny laid it on him. And Holmes laid it right back on him. Nobody's saying nothing bad about Holmes up in around here. Danny Christie's not saying nothing bad about it. There's a lot of respect going on there. A lot of respect. I believe the guy that said something in a post fight that upset uh, the champ, and he replied back to it, but there wasn't nothing real ugly or anything like that. You know, they're men. They can be a little aggressive in a disagreement. This getting on the fighting and fans arguing and banging back and forth and all this stupid stuff. He's strict. To, you know, I didn't see a tough guy. I saw a guy that could box and could punch go after a guy that gave up. That's what I saw. I'm not trying to take nothing away from the winner. I like that boy. I like him. He's good for boxing. He is aggressive. And he's small. And he, and. And he doesn't, he gets past everything put in front of him. Height, uh, weight, strength, anything is put in front of him. He'll face it and deal with it. And it really, I look at him and I don't see it hard for him. Because he's getting into that little danger zone and he's figured out to hell with it. All I got to do is get right through here. The picture's this big. This is what he's going through. And he's got a little spot about like this up towards the top. And he just says, well, I'm going through that. Boom. Because as soon as you get through that, you win. As soon as you, it's called a heart. But we got to start seeing some people fight. We got to start seeing some fights. And uh, we saw one with Joe Joyce and Zane. 
But we basically just seen a guy stepping forward to get punched in the face. But he took it. He's got heart. He wasn't, oh, yeah, fans, I, uh, I got winded. Uh, I don't know how to describe a liver shot, but uh, we will, um, I'm going to do a fight or two, and uh, then maybe I'll take Tank on at 147. I'll be back. Okay, bye. No, 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 no. No. They weren't out there with him because they were mad as hell at him because he quit. And we got to get past the hype. We got. When I was a young guy, they were looking for a great white hope for the heavyweight championship of the world. Right? They'd hype a guy. Now, this is not saying that blacks were not hyped because there were more blacks. So there were more blacks hyped more. I'm just talk, talking to you how they had full white people. This, oh my God, this guy's so great. This guy's great. And then they'd, they'd just run them right up the mill work there. And then they'd get in with a heavyweight champion and just get their ass handed to them. Because they wasn't worth a damn to start with. They're just promoting to make money. And that, that's what they're doing now. But at least back then, it was in certain situations and it was here and there. And wasn't almost every other damn fight you see. It wasn't 50 or 60 or 80 percent of the BS that's going on today. So, that BF, uh, BKFC over there. In the UK, it's the bomb. It's the real deal. Uh, it's the real deal. And you kids need to go over there and watch that. That's where you need to learn where you're watching. You'll learn great technique. You know, you can't really just slap the hell out of somebody uh, in that. They're, they're bare knuckled. You, 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 they, they land and they know how to land it. And if you watch these guys and watch guys like Danny Christie, uh, it's, it's going to perfect your punching. It's, it's going to perfect everything with you. Well, he's not uh, Usyk. You know what? If he had 40 more pounds on him, uh, he'd take Usyk out now. I'm sorry. I don't give a shit who says what and call me crazy. He, he's, he don't know how much longer he's got. He's, he's getting tired. And that's something you don't see in boxing anymore. Somebody just getting tired. And uh, why would they get tired? Number one, they don't hardly fight. What, had, what, you, uh, we see somebody fighting in their 40s when I was a kid? Unheard of. Uh, I believe the the old mongoose was the 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 uh, and I can't remember his name right now. Fought at forty or something. Uh, I believe Sugar Ray Robinson uh, fought past forty. Uh, the the it was nothing normal about this. If if you get if you gonna just patty cake patty cake bakers man if, if you you're gonna see guys fighting in their late fifties or their sixties you know back when I was younger it, you would get killed you would literally be murdered in the ring if you were that damn dumb today it's so controlled and half fixed and then you look at those scorecards and that knockdown round and uh, somebody scoring that round 10-10 come on folks in a knockdown round where you got over a minute left and maybe if you just got some seconds left in a knockdown round uh, up to the point where you're knocked down if you're leading you get a point taken from you for that knockdown. And as you proceed on, if the other guy wins the round handily on, uh, you, you lose that extra point. There's no way you could put a 10-10 round. 
the fix was in. And that's why I got jumped on, and that's why Teddy Atlas got brought up when I brought the truth up. Oh, this is this Teddy Atlas <laughs> mess. Well, I'll keep following that Teddy Atlas <laughs> mess because it's the truth. So, hopefully this is my last one on this. Uh, well, it's going to be because... We ain't got time to keep messing with this. We 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 do things around here. We don't can't sit online constantly and uh, uh, bitch and moan, but so much. So, but this is my moaning now. And you young guys, again, real quickly, get aggressive. Get more aggressive. I don't care what the hell somebody's telling you. It could be. Angelo Dundee in your corner. Get aggressive. That's that's the biggest main ingredient and requirement to win in boxing today. And don't give up. Don't quit. Prayers and love to everybody that that cares enough about Joe or my old fanny to watch us. We much love to you. Thank you so much.